So let's start with this variable primary flow concept. And great application, we can make it work, we got a lot of them out there. It's just a little bit sensitive to how you set them up and make them work. And let's just kind of see why. The concept is here, I've got one set of pumps. This set of pumps pumping through the bore and through the whole system. So I got three bores in parallel, I got a couple of pumps as you can see from the diagram. And those pumps are pumping through all the heating coils, through the roll air trolls, all the way back, and we're pumping through the, through the boilers as well. Now, how do we control those boilers? How do we stage those boilers becomes the question. So let's start off with the first question that you're going to have to deal with if you're dealing with variable primary flow with one set of pumps pumping through everything. And I switch you over to ASHRAE 90.1 2010 because of the energy code, this is what we're after. There's a very important piece in here you need to be aware of. Now, I think most of us are aware of the pump isolation on chiller plants, and that when you cut a chiller off, you're supposed to stop the flow through the chiller and so forth. But a lot of people haven't really looked at the last paragraph, because the last paragraph of this slide very clearly says the same thing applies to boards. If we have more than one board, and we go cycling the boards on and off, that we've got to reduce the flow or shut the flow off when we cut a bar off. Same concept. In other words, they don't want flow through a bar that's not running. It's a waste of energy. It makes good sense, I think, you think about it that way. How do we apply this code? How do we make it work to verbal primary pump? Now, we're going to show uh, an actual system schematic in a couple slides, but before we get there, Let's plant a few things in your mind, and these are must. If you're going to do a verbal primary pump design, you have to do these things. I don't care who you are or what brand it is to make it work. You're going to have to make sure each boiler has a flow limiter so you don't over pump it. You're going to have to make sure each boiler has its own two-way isolation valve to meet the energy code of 90.1. 2013, by the way, 90.1, 2013, that's the same thing in it, that you don't flow through the bore when it's, when it's not online, when it's not prime. You've also got to have a minimum flow rate for each bore to start it up in staging, otherwise it's going to kick out on you on manual high limits. You must have a minimum system volume for each bore. You've got a million minimum gallons in the system so you don't short cycle it. It can get it started. And then you also must protect those pumps. There, there's going to be some minimum flow rate through the pump. We want to make sure we protect it. Those things you're going to have to do, and we're going to walk through each one of them in just a minute again, but get them in your head. No options here. These are mandatory things you've got to do. So if we start looking a little closer at these two-way isolation valves that are on each board, what are the characteristics of these things and what do, what do we need to do here? Well, the first tricky part is they've got to be timed to open and timed to close. You can't just stick a two-way valve on and off. Uh, and that time to open and close is based on the bore response time. So I cannot give you one answer for every bore. You've got to go to the bore manufacturer and find out when he fires off on startup, how long does it take him to get up and running? Is it 30 seconds? Is it a minute before it gets under control? And when you cut it back off, how long does it take to get the residual BTUs out of that bore back in your system so you don't waste them? So those two pieces on the time, in fact, most of the two-way valves would probably be provided by the board vendor or at least get their advice on what time open and close. These uh, must also be open when the pumps flow. In other words, section two here, one of these two-way isolation valves must be open when the pump's on so that you can take the residual heat out. In other words, you cut the bore off, you don't quickly just close the valve, you leave the pump running for some period of time to remove the BTUs from the bore and put them in the system after the bore is cut off. So you've got to make it run for some minimum time after the bore quits firing to get, that, get those BTUs out of the bore and put them in the system. So that time is based on individual bores, you've got to make sure you have that number. Third bullet point here, you want that pump in a lot with the two-way isolation valves to make sure you don't dead hit. In other words, you, if you initiate and you allow the boiler to come on and you're putting it in the heating mode, now the boiler may not be fired yet, but you're putting it in the heating mode and you want to circulate water through your system to allow the boilers to cut on and off automatically. Well, the only way you can do that is one of the boilers 
even if it's off, one of the boils minimum has to have its two-way valve open to establish a flow path. So you've got flow through the boilers, through the system, so your system's in automatic mode. And you don't want the dead head those pumps. We want the minimum flow pumps. Last bullet point here would be, we would recommend probably a few three-way valves out of the end would be ideal to establish that minimum flow for your boiler and our minimum flow for your pump, whichever is the biggest. But remember, we've also got to have one of those two-way valves on those boilers open at that point in time to establish a flow path. Let's bring all this together now with a little piping diagram. And here we go back to that verbal primary pump schematic. We had a few slides back. But notice we've, had, we've added flow limiters. So now each boiler has a flow limiter, and this means I can set it for the max allowable GPM through that bar so we won't hurt the boiler. Second thing we've added is a two-way valve. Each bar has its own individual automatic two-way valve. Time to open and close as we talked about to make sure when that ball is not being fired, we can cut it off. Now you see we've got two pumps, and you also see a little bypass valve. That's a modulating valve here if you don't use three ways. The next slide I'll show you where the three ways would go. But you've got to have a flow path here, so when all the two-way valves on your heating coils are closed, there has to be some bypass to have minimum flow through the boiler and minimum flow for my pumps. And if you kind of look at it a little bit further, you, you can start understanding that, I hope. But do you need a bowl of bypass flow path and modulating valve? You see the bypass in that slide, and the answer is abs absolutely you have to have one. So again, we're recommending that we go out in the system and put a three-way valve size for the minimum flow rate for that bore and or the minimum flow rate for the pumps, whichever is highest, and we make sure that we've got that flow path established. If you don't do that, you will have issues. Also remember, when we turn the pump on, the lead pump must run continuously to provide system flow. We have to have a flow path even if the two-way valves in the heating systems are closed. And we turn the pump on, we've got to have a flow path for them somehow. That's why, as you see in this slide, we are showing three-way valves at the very end of the system Enough of those three back three-way valves size for minimum flow rate of one more and on the minimum flow rate of the pump, whichever is the biggest. That would be the ideal. If you don't want to do that, you can use the two-way valve we showed a few slides back in the equipment room and have to bypass around. Well let's look at this slide a little bit further now because we've got the whole system on here. Think about enabling this system. The ball is not firing yet. You want to put it in the automatic mode so that as you get a call for heat the system can automatically cycle the boilers on and off. So you can enable the system, that means you're turning the pumps on. That means through one of those boilers, even though all three boilers are off at this point in time, there has to be a flow path. We have to have one of those two-way valves overriding, at least one, even with the boiler off, to establish a flow path for our pumps. And we need a three-way valve out at the end, so now we have a continuous flow path that we can flow with the boilers off even with all the heating two-way valves closed, we do have a flow path that we can establish, and we can have a minimum flow for one bore and a minimum flow for my pump. That's critical in verbal primary pumps, and that's where people get in trouble, right there. If we don't do this, you will have problems.